Well, good morning. And it is a beautiful day. We're getting closer and close, closer to Christmas. Amen. I'm excited. I hope you are excited. Amen. If not, hopefully the message today will bring you to that place where you are excited. We're still talking about the promises of God. I'm going to be here for a while. And today I'm looking at faith. Because faith is not only a promise, but it is a gift from our Heavenly Father. So I want you to, to go get your Bible, your paper, and your pencil. And I want you to get ready to take some notes because I have some nuggets for you. And I want you to share, share, share this video with your family, your friends, and your foes. Because we all need help. And in this season of life, we truly need our faith to be activated and stirred up. Amen. We don't need any residue at the bottom of the container. We, we need it to be filled up, stirred up, so that we can get the, the full and the true essence of what the God kind of faith is. Amen. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, I just praise you, and I thank you for the anointing to draw. I thank you for the anointing. Um, upon the um, Logos word that comes out of my mouth and transform into the rhema word, a word that's alive, a word that will energize and excite your people about your promises. And Father, I thank you that they have ears to hear what thus saith the Lord. In Jesus' name, I pray. I will be right back. God, well, I hope that you are ready. I am ready. I'm excited. And I see, once again, that there are people who are jumping on. Um, please share this message with those that you know. Share, share, share. Give me some likes. Give me some thumbs up. Amen. Because as I th said, this is a word that people need to hear today in our life. And so, we're I'm talking about faith. You say, oh, I've heard faith before. But you know what? One of the strongholds on talking about faith and living it in faith is the word of God. This says, when the Son of Man comes again, will he find faith? He didn't say, will he find love? Will he find peace? Will he find faith? And how many of you know that we need faith in this season of our life? We need faith. To, to go to the grocery store um, because fear is trying to paralyze. Fear is trying to grip the people of God. Fear is trying to, to grip those that it rains on. Remember, it rains on the just as well as the unjust. And it's trying to grip them. And you know, fear will paralyze you. Fear will keep you from moving. Now, I'm not talking about using wisdom because we need to use wisdom. And don't let anyone um, place anything on you. Say, oh, you're not operating in, in faith. You know, um, Dr. Frederick Casey Price wrote a book years ago called Faith, Foolishness, and Presumption. And so sometimes we think we're moving in faith and we're not. And so you want to make sure that you can identify the faith that you are operating in, the faith that you are walking in. Amen. And so I'm going to be talking to you based on Mark 11, 22 um, through 24, reading out of the New King James Bible. Look, I hope you guys are having a tremendous day. I hope that you woke up this morning with great expectation of the manifestation of God's word in your life. If not, lay back down, take a snooze, and wake up again excited 
You know, um, it's just like on, on Christmas morning, there's some adults that still wake up on Christmas morning with the air of excitement because they're expecting something under the tree that they didn't know that was there. And so we need to wake up every morning with a spirit of excitement, knowing that our father has something great in store for us because he is the best gift giver that I have ever known. He is the best gift giver. Amen. And he has given us a gift of his son. He's given us the gift of the Holy Spirit who was left here on earth to lead us and guide us. And so before I go into Mark 11 and 22, and I'm going to be talking about faith, which is a promise of God. And I'm for a while now until God tells me something different. Amen. And as I said, I w I'm here to encourage you. I'm here to stir you up. I'm here to um, be the wind in your black back and blow you into your future. Amen. So Mark 11, 22, it talks about the faith of God. And so there are many scriptures in the Bible that talks about faith. And guess what? In Romans 11, 12 and 3, it talks about the measure of faith. And so we need to know about the measure of faith because each one was given a measure of faith. And then in Ephesians 2 and 8, it says through faith. Oh, my God. We talked about that yesterday, through faith through faith. And so you got to have faith. And it's through faith that we receive the promises, that we receive the blessings, that we receive the Holy Spirit, that we receive salvation. It is through faith. And so we need faith in our life. And I love this one, Romans, Romans 10 and 17. This is one of those scriptures you need to write in the palm of your hand. Amen. Um, so that you can remember it. And, it's, and it talks about how faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So I truly believe in the word that today your faith is being increased because you're hearing words about faith. You're hearing scripture about faith, my, not my opinion, okay? But straight out word, word that will transform your life so faith come by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. So you need to continually hear it. I, I say it constantly. I will say it until Jesus come. One of my favorite scriptures is Hebrew 2 and 1, that we need to be reminded of the things that we have already heard. And so as I said, I'm giving you some nuggets. Write them down. If you're on the line today, write these scriptures down in the comments section so that people can go and look at them and review them. And maybe they said, I didn't see those before, but maybe you did see them. But I guarantee you, every time you look at the word, God is constantly unfolding, unfolding like an onion, peeling back different layers of a scripture. And you say, wow, I read that before, but I didn't see it in that light. And so continue in the faithfulness of reading the word of God and understand it. I talked yesterday um, about staying in a scripture for a while, you know, um, staying in there for six months, you know, look at Paul and Paul's journey and how Paul turned out. Well, you can read on faith for another six months, another year, and not really exalt exhort or um, do away with all the power of faith that faith has. Amen. And so um, Ephesians through faith, Romans 10 and 17, my God, faith comes by hearing. 2 Corinthians 4 and 13, I speak, my God. And because I speak, I believe. The believing is the faith in what you're speaking. And I have titled this series, I Have Food in My Mouth. I have food in my mouth and I'm talking. And the food that I have is the word of God, the bread, the bread of life. 
How many of your parents told you, don't talk with food in your mouth? It is so rude. I, I knew of someone who would talk and, and they would have food in their mouth. You saw all the food in their mouth. I'm like, that's the way we need to have spiritual food in our mouth. So that when we're talking, all people can see is the bread of life. All they can see is the word of God in our mouth. And you go, wow, look at God. God is so amazing. Let me give you a couple of more scriptures. Matthew 4 and 4. Man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. I'm still talking about faith. Look, share, share, share this. There are those that need faith because they've been paralyzed by the things that they have heard on the news from their family, their friends, and their foes, okay? And they need their faith stirred up. They need to know that God's got your back. Amen. But let, let's look at Mark eleven twenty two, 22. And it says, so Jesus answered them and said, have faith in God. He's telling you, have faith in God. Don't have faith in man. Don't have faith in what your friends are say, saying. Have the faith in God. That's why we need to acknowledge God in all of our ways, my God. And he will direct your path. Don't look at man to direct your path, but have faith in God. I'm talking having the God kind of faith, that faith that won't let you down. Verse 23 says, for surely I say to you, whosoever says unto this mountain, and guess what? You are whosoever. We are all whosoever says to this mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea and does not die doubt in his heart, but believe that those things he says will be done and he will have whatever he says. You got food in your mouth? Talk. Talk the word of God. Let your talking do your walking, my God. Let your talking be your swag, my God. Talk the powerful anointed word of God. Now, let's look back at this verse 23. For assuredly, I say to you, whosoever says unto this mountain. Now, what is your mountain? You know, when I, I was in Greece one year and I saw what I, I look at today and have a visual point of a mountain, that it was so tall that I kind of had to lean to the side to see the top of the mountain because it was so high. I look at the mountains I'm close by where I live, and I can see over top of them, not when I, and without leaning to the side. But these mountains that I saw in Greece, you know, and it was like, oh my God, what tall, tall mountains. Like I said, make sure you share this message because we, you need to hear this word today. Amen. Praise God. And so um, what is your mountain? And sometimes you may think your mountain is so big, there's no way that you can get over it, go around it, or climb it. That's the only way you can get there, and that's if God takes you to the top of the mountain, and you become the priest of the mountain and intercede and pray. But what is your mountain? Is your mountain today the lack of finances? Is your mountain today sickness? Is your mountain today um, mental illness? Is your mountain today loneliness? But God says, speak to the mountain and tell it to be that removed. Well, what do you, you do? You say, look, get out of here. You no, know, you go into the word of God. That's why it says study to show yourself approved, a workman that need not be ashamed and find the scripture that applies to the situation that you're in. What is your mountain? Is it grief? Has grief overtaken you? Amen. There are a lot of people who have lost loved ones and grief is overtaking them. But guess what? You have the power and you have the authority to speak to the mountain of grief. You have the authority to speak to the mountain of loneliness and tell loneliness, look, I may be, a, I may be single, but I am not alone. I may have lost a loved one, but I am not alone because God is with me 
and he will bring those in your path that you need to help support and encourage you. I know when I, um, when my husband went from life to life, you know, we went everywhere together. We did everything together. Oh my God. Yes, we did. We did everything together. We traveled together. And so my traveling buddy uh, was no longer there. Was I lonely? Yes, I was lonely. But I also understood that God was with me, that Elohim was with me. Amen. The God um, who will never leave me nor forsake me. He was there with me. And so some of you, you know, they, they say in this season uh, of what we call Christmas, that there are a lot of people who commit suicide. If you have in your mind committing suicide because you feel lonely, you don't have any family members, you don't have any friends, guess what? Go show yourself friendly. Go, go to your neighbor's house. Go and, and introduce yourself to people at church. Get involved in committees. Get involved in the luncheons and, and the women's groups and the men's group. So you have to show yourself friendly in order for you to have friends. So that could be a mountain that you have that you're, you're feeling loneliness. And, and if you're feeling lonely, you, you gotta sometimes you got to chisel at that mountain. You got to chisel. You got to chisel at that mountain. The word of God says the word is like a hammer. My God, beat the mess out of that mountain. Knock it down. Decree and declare the um, word with authority and power. My God, yes, beat that mountain down to ashes and decree and declare the word of God. So what is your mountain? Is your mountain... Your health, is, is it the lack of finances? Is it the concern for a loved one? Is it the concern for a child who has run away? Guess what? Loose them angels to go and get that child and bring that child home. I've done it many a times. I had one of them love children, my God. They kept me on my knees, and I would loose the angels to go and get them and bring them home. And guess what? He would come home. So you have authority to speak to the mountain. So the mouth could be multiple things. And I know it says out of the mouth of two or three more witnesses, let every word be established. And guess what? You know, you can have someone to pray for you. Just say, pray for me. You don't have to tell them what it is, but just say, pray for me. But I will assuredly be praying for those that are on the line. If you submit your prayer request, if you let so, um, let me know what it is that you need prayer for, amen, I will be praying for you today. Good morning, evangelist. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. God is amazing. And so it says, speak to the mountain. Be thou removed. Be. Exist in the movement. Exist in the promises. Exist in the grace. Be removed and cast into the sea. And guess what? It's cast in the sea. It's so heavy because it's had you weighted down. It is so heavy, it's going to go straight to the bottom. Amen. And do not, does not doubt in his heart, but believe those things which he has said will truly be done. You got to have faith. It's going to take faith. I told you it's going to take faith. That's why you need to hear about faith. I'm here to encourage you today in your faith walk, in your faith talk. Look, put the food, the word of God in your mouth. I'm giving you permission. I'm giving you permission to talk with food in your mouth and begin to decree and declare the word of God. You may think it's foolish, but let me tell you, it is not foolish. Speak the word of God 24-7, seven days a week, all month long. Decree and declare the word of God. You have a promise that's in here. Yes, I'm talking about faith, but it's a promise that whatsoever things that you say will be done. And don't doubt in your heart. Well, how do you remove doubt? You remove doubt by speaking the word, standing on the word, decreeing and declaring the word, and being in great expectation, my God, of what you say will truly come to pass. That's how you operate in it, my God. Verse 27, 24 says, Therefore I say to you, 
whatsoever things you ask when you pray. Woo, my God, come on, make me rock here. I'm rocking and rolling with this word today. I'm getting myself excited because there are things that I am believing God for. And we start this over again. Therefore, I say to you. Now, this is in the red letter Bible. This is, you know, written in red. And so Jesus is saying, what's therefore I say to you. He's speaking directly to you. He's speaking directly to you in the word of God. Look in the mirror. Woo, and this is the Holy Spirit. Look in, in the mirror. Get your Bible. And, and go to this verse 24 in Mark 11 and look at yourself. Therefore, I say to you, God is, Jesus is speaking directly to you. Whatever thing you ask when you pray, um, believe that you receive them and you will have them. So he's letting you know, decree and declare that word. Look in the mirror and speak to yourself. Release pearls of wisdom in your life and say, therefore, I say to you, point to yourself, look in the mirror and say, therefore, I say to you, whatever things um, you ask when you pray. So when do you believe, when do you receive? When you pray, not afterwards. So if you receive it when you pray, guess what you decree and declare that you have? Father, I thank you that every need is met. I truly believe that your word decreed and declared that whatever I ask for, when I pray, I receive it. Not afterwards, not what next week, not next month. Got to remember that faith is right now. Faith is now. Woo, yes, let me say that again. Faith is now. Faith is now, my God. Get that in your spirit. Let the word of God be hammered in your heart. Let it be tattooed on you. Look, write it in the palm of your hand. Faith is now. So right now, when I pray, is when I believe that I receive the blessings and the promises and what I have asked God for. Now, guess what? I'm not going to go in and tell you the story. I'm going to be here for a while, so I will, I will share the story. Um, about the first car that I was, I owned, amen, or I, I released my faith to receive. But let me tell you, God's word is alive. It is true and it is faithful. It, therefore, I say to you, my God, what more could you want? That's a contract. That's an agreement. That's a covenant agreement that God has given to you by his son in his word. Whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. What is it that you are believing God for? Some of you may think, I, I don't need anything. I have everything that I need. No, you don't. Not unless you are given to the poor. Not unless you're opening up your pantry and feeding those that are hungry. If you have just enough for yourself, then you don't have everything that you need. We serve a God of more than enough. He is the God who is all sufficient. He will make a way out of no way, my God. And so whatever you pray for, whatever you pray for, believe that you receive it and you will have it. So never think that you have all that you need. You want your cup to overflow. You want to be able to give. You want to be able to go into the market and, and, and stand at the cash register and say, I want to pay for this person and that person and that person's food and, and not blink, you know? And if you can't pay for all of it, say, I want to give $20. I want to get $25 towards this person, that person, and this person's food. My God, what a, 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 assignment to be on. If you can't do 25, do 10. If you can't do 10, do five. You know, um, God is amazing. He, this is a season for us to bless others, but you got to do it through faith. You got to do it through faith. I tell you, he is merciful. He is loving. He is kind. Let me go over these scriptures one more time, but let me talk about to you what I mentioned 
Uh, Mark eleven twenty two is where we're at. It talks about have faith in God. Where's, who's your faith in? Is your faith in your paycheck? You know, there are companies that have shut down and people have not gotten paid. Where is your faith? Who is your faith in? It better be in God. Because let me tell you, if he could bring water out of a rock, if he can rain down manna, what is it from heaven? He can give you whatever it is that you need. He can place it on someone's heart and believe that they will obey what he has spoken to them to do. And so Mark 11, 22, have faith in God. Romans 12 and 3, met the measure of faith. Ephesians 2 and 8, write these scriptures down in the comments so that people can go back and look at them. And so Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing the word of God. And then 2 Corinthians 4 and 13, I speak. Have food in your mouth. Let, when you open up your mouth, let people see the word all in your mouth. I have one person say, why is it that when you talk, and you you got to talk scripture because I have food. I have word in my mouth. I have food in my mouth. I have the bread of life in my mouth. What's in your mouth? Is your mouth um, okay? I won't go there. Anyway, you need to have food in your mouth. Praise God. So let me read this. Mark eleven twenty two. What a powerful scripture. So Jesus answered them and said, "Have faith in God." I say to you today, have faith in God. For assuredly, I say to you, whosoever, and remember, you are whosoever, says to this mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea and does not doubt. I said to you the other day, two things cannot occupy the same space at the same time. You cannot have faith and doubt occupying the same space at the same time. It just won't happen. It cannot be done. And so you want to remove doubt. You want to remove fear and replace it with faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so does not doubt in his heart, but, and that but is a powerful three-letter word. It voids out everything that was said prior to, but believe those things which you say, you will be done. He will have whatever he says. So if you don't believe, if you don't have the faith, then that which you heard prior to in verse 23 will not exist in your life. So you got to have faith. You got to have faith. You got to believe. You got to trust God. And verse 24, therefore, woo, what is it therefore? Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, prayer is communication. Prayer is talking to God. Prayer is bringing your your um, your your requests before. Let your requests be made known unto the Lord. But don't ask amiss. Make sure you ask according to the word. Is it scripturally based? You know, we've been praying. Oh my God! Almost three hundred and sixty-five days. We're on the countdown. My God. Uh, my boast is in the Lord, not boast in myself and those who have been praying, but my boast is in the Lord. I think we have something like 10, 11 days left to go, my God. And so we've been communicating with God. We've been praying in the spirit. We've been decreeing and declaring the word of God, not our thoughts, but the word of the living God. Therefore, I say to you, whatsoever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. What a powerful scripture. My God, this has truly been a blessing. I've been excited. Please, everyone that's on the line, share this. We need our faith stirred up because we need to have faith in God in this season of everything that's going on. People have lost their jobs. They've lost loved ones. We have this pandemic and fear is trying to grip people, trying to paralyze people and keep them from moving. Please share, share, share this word. Let God use it, use you as an instrument of his love. Good morning, Amy. Let God use you as an 
instrument of his word, of, uh, of his word. Share this with those that, that need hope. We need hope. Some people are, have lost hope in society. They have lost hope in themselves. They've lost hope in everything that's going on. Children are, are being taken out of school. Businesses are closing down again. Ask God for your strategic plan. Know and have faith in God that whatever he says, he will do. He will do it. I love you. Thank you for getting up this early in the morning and being with me. Make sure you share, share, share this word. And remember, um, we're talking about the promises of God. Faith is a promise. Woo! Yes, it is. It is a promise. And we're talking about faith because we need faith today. I'm here to stare you up. I'm here to encourage you. I'm here to walk with you. Amen. In your journey, in your faith walk. Amen. God is so good. Remember, I love you, but most of all, God loves you to the point where he gave his only begotten son that you would have life and life more abundantly. Please share this message with those that you know. God bless. I'll be back tomorrow at the same place, the same time. God bless.